This time on Whatever We Want, we talk about the best big media franchises of all time. Oh, yeah. We ask the age old question What is better, Star Wars, Marvel, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings? It's a really interesting conversation. There are time codes down in the description if you'd like to jump around to different points of the episode. Enjoy! Oh, yeah. Pre butter, pre pre butter, butter, pre butter, peanut butter. Daniel, how are you doing, my friend? Doing pretty good, man. How you doing? I am good, thank you. Also, apologies. In our last episode, we said this episode is going to be like a, our an interview with um, the visual effects guy. We're pushing that. That's going to be just like a bonus episode. That's not our normal, normal Monday release. That's going to be an extra episode sometime in the future. This is more an experiment mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. We talked mm-hmm. about it a little bit up top, but we're going to be trying out some new segments just to kind of see what six and then expand upon those ideas in the future. So we're testing the waters on a bunch of things. We've got, I mean, the main segment today, where, like we said, best media franchises, but we're also going to be doing rank a ranking section the top fives of, of our things um and then we've got totally to your trivia tidbits again and then a special pitch thing where we're going to pitch a show based on something that the other person says daniel doesn't know what i've prepped it. i don't know what daniel's prepped etc we'll get yep, into exactly. it exactly but yeah so let us know what you think of these new segments also another announcement up top we've got our hundredth episode coming up soon within like two months maybe something like that so yeah if you have any ideas or suggestions for things you want us to do to celebrate let us know, because I think that's a pretty cool milestone. Final bit of pre-banter. I feel like you know you're becoming an adult when you have a nightmare about buying groceries, because that <laughs> happened to me a couple days ago. I was, uh, I woke up and my, I was terrified because I literally thought I bought groceries and I go out to guys at the front and my total was like $700. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> so like when finances become your, your nightmare, I think that's when you know you've crossed the, crossed the threshold into adulthood, not alcohol drinking being legal or like taxes but <laughs> nightmares about grocery shopping <laughs> have, you, have you crossed that threshold yet daniel <laughs> i have not had nightmares about grocery shopping no but i have Still had nightmares <laughs> where it's like well no like family members are like there and they just like i don't know they like laugh at you for some stupid reason you like something you did you and you're just like about that. <laughs> what's going on what did i do and then i don't know where you have no pants on and you're like oh, oh you geez <laughs> all right well on that note um you ready to jump into things with the introduction yeah man i mean we in or no <laughs> give it to me. the hybrid again all right so welcome yeah. back to whatever we want the podcast where we jake and daniel two devils with him and gentlemen uh review content across all mediums of media Mediums of media. Maybe we read maybe ever. Movies, TV shows, video games, and beyond <laughs> to give you the most interesting behind the scenes insights, storytelling techniques, and more. Everything that's on screen is there for a reason, and it's our job to break down why. Let's jump into the show. So, main segment of the week. We are talking about what is the best media franchise. And I think we have to kind of define franchise. This might be like a part one. Yeah, I was gonna say, we should like this, define this first, because this is like important don't worry daniel i came prepared the wikipedia definition of a oh media goodness, franchise okay. is a media franchise also known as a multimedia franchise is a collection of related media in which several derivative works have been produced from an original creative work of fiction such as a film a work of literature a television program or a video game um so yeah i think th- you can consider like so many things like franchises like kung fu panda is technically like a franchise mm-hmm. but I- yeah. we're talking about just like the biggest ones and i think we can push those other ones to like another episode like i want to talk about avatar last airbender because that personally has like had a big impact on me and also just a lot of stuff coming up but i don't consider that one of the big heavy hitters i feel like it's also important to break between two like sub franchises yeah like like for example like like spider-man there's so many like spider-man game movies and stuff like that but that's but, all like, part of marvel that's part of marvel marvel's a franchise right. it's interesting though i i looked up the biggest franchises and marvel was listed as one of them but also a few down spider-man individually was one of the biggest franchises just with the really? toys and video games yeah and that was the same with dc and batman was the same way like batman was, as its own franchise was big but anyways yeah the top franchises i think i mean we talked about marvel and star wars obviously is another huge one this is just kind of a general overview of all of the top franchises so star yeah. wars i think is a big one mm-hmm. what, what do you think of star wars that's a loaded question <laughs> oh man star wars is terrible man i hate <laughs> it so much uh no dude i love star wars it's great except for like the sequels but we don't talk about that i think it's something to be said that just <laughs> it's been around for so long like it's coming up on 50 yeah, years it, it has such a history Wait, yeah like it's 45 years i think or something like that and it, it really did i think launch and propel current franchises and like oh yeah the definitely. size and scope of because before star wars what was there really that was like to that scale that has lasted till today well it's funny to think about it because you have like dune which was graphic novel and stuff that was based off of. Right. But 
Dune wasn't necessarily a franchise yet because there wasn't like movies or like anything crazy about it. I feel like most recently now with the new version of Dune that just came out, I feel like it's definitely going to be building up into its own franchise. You know, something a tangent of, yeah, franchise that's like a tangent itself off of Star Wars. I think just with these these huge franchises like Star Wars, Marvel, people are seeing these are extremely profitable and they're trying to build their own franchises they don't do it with the best effort always like they're just trying to like yeah. cash grab like i think that's what dc honestly was trying to do early on they were kind of trying to skip steps but i don't know these franchises i feel like have been built up well so ish there, there's arguments to be made but um just with star wars like this the scope of it like everyone i know thinks of the movies but also just like there were tons of video games like in the dude, early the 2000s crazy. and late 90s i remember dude, i remember when i first got the first lego star wars game dude i know and i was so excited i accidentally dropped the disc like in the driveway oh my gosh i was like ah <laughs> it, was, it was fine but like that's good you know dude, i just had a second that, that's panic like, attack for you <laughs> <laughs> but no dude it's just amazing how it's like excitement you're able to get from yeah you know how things are able to build with games and other media and that's the thing it spans across generations because like you were a kid and you enjoyed the lego star wars game like my dad would always play the obi-wan game from like the early 2000s he loved mm -hmm. that and that and like he was like in his 30s 40s the force unleashed game i liked when i was like kind of a tween i guess um and then like the <laughs> battlefronts uh, those the are great battlefronts, oh. and there's also like canon versus non-canon like the expanded universe with all those books like there's tons mm -hmm. tons of novels and the toys the toy franchise collectibles it's we also we've also got the new wave of tv shows that are coming out like we had the clone wars and rebels and we've also got mando boba Bucks. fett ahsoka uh the acolyte the whole upcoming like roster you know yeah. Okay, well, that, that brings up a good point when you talk about, like, all the shows and stuff like that. We've brought it up before, uh, flooding the market in a way. I'm not even sure that's the best way to describe it. Like, but when there's just so much content that's kind of becoming, like, it's too... It's too much? Yeah. Do you think Star Wars is getting there? I feel like Marvel's going to get there way before Star Wars does. Yeah, no, I feel like Marvel's going to get there way sooner. But, like, I feel like Star Wars right now is at a position where it might be doing that a little bit. I was really interested with the announcement... I don't know if we talked about this last week, but with Miss Marvel, that trailer that came out, I don't know if that came yeah. out by the time we quoted our last episode, but with Miss Marvel, it is releasing at the same time Kenobi is, like on the same day. So like Kenobi comes out at the end of May, and then there's like two weeks of Kenobi episodes, and the third Kenobi episode drops on a Wednesday, and then Miss Marvel starts dropping also on Wednesday at the exact same time. I'm really interested on why that decision takes place and like what that means it like it could also just be a test either a test but maybe or both those shows like setting something up that like it can't wait any longer like it won't make sense if it drops after something else maybe mm. i don't know potentially i feel i feel it could be a test to see like kind of interest like who's going to be interested in uh watching say like miss marvel over kenobi i feel right. like that's not going to be fortuitous for miss marvel if i'm being honest definitely not no because again kenobi's such a beloved and already grounded in character like come on like yeah. just the reaction videos off of people watching the trailer like well this on. might be a way to like see who diehard marvel fans are like that don't care about that's star true. wars at all because i feel like anyone that has any slight interest in star wars would go watch kenobi over miss marvel but anyone that is like a diehard marvel fan would just watch miss marvel so that's my, that would be i would it's really interesting to see the data that would come out of that i know we'll never see it in the light of day but speaking of marvel though let's jump into marvel because i feel like star wars is a great franchise that spanned over 45 years i think marvel has done better in the modern era oh like definitely. since its inception it's, it's just the way that the, the scalability of it of how they've managed the growth of introducing their new characters not only through yeah. films but also then into the growth of, of other media i remember back when like the first iron man games came out and even though they weren't necessarily the greatest games they still introduced what it could be like for future you know marvel games for uh future characters that's a good point you have to think because marvel is so new to this whole fr giant franchise thing they have a lot more of experimenting and kind of figuring it out that like star wars mm -hmm. has had decades to develop like star wars and lucasfilm really developed pioneered a lot of the technology that like led to these amazing games a and i feel like marvel did not do that so they have to kind of adopt and like learn so i feel like there's mm -hmm. going to be a learning curve that star wars maybe didn't have i've never even thought about it that way but i think that's totally possibility it's also just interesting to see how i mean you know how it works when it comes to vfx now and all like the whole pipeline how like things are sent to like different houses and so on but it's also interesting to see how with taking the ips of some of these franchises for example again like spider-man intellectual properties for people don't know. yeah giving access to those to specific other studios 
right? And yeah, there's two cases like recently that we could talk about this. So, like, Sony can do that with, with uh, Spider-Man, and we've got the Insomniac Spider-Man games, which was amazing. Totally amazing games. Same time, in the film aspect, we got that with Star Wars Visions, you know? How you're we able to get all those new kind of that. media, yeah. but still within the same franchise. I really liked that experiment, yeah. They're just kind of, like, outsourcing yeah. some of it, yeah. And, and I, I think it's also interesting, just Marvel, I think, is fascinating and gets major points for me in my book because it is the, the MCU as a whole. We're mainly talking about the MCU and the recent stuff with Marvel, but like that it was a huge comeback story because they were going bankrupt in the nineties and had to sell off a majority of their like a list superheroes, like Spider-Man to Sony. And then like X-Men, Fantastic the Fox, Four, um, to, yeah, yeah. X-Men, like uh, the Hulk. So the, the fact that they built this huge, franchise redefine the new age of superhero movies with their b-list b-tier characters like captain america iron man no one knew mm-hmm. who these people were and the fact that it succeeded so well i think it's just a huge gets brownie points for me honestly <laughs> um and but it's also interesting because marvel i feel like their franchise we think about it again like from 2008 on but they they did have a lot of stuff earlier like the old like lou ferrigno incredible hulk Yep. TV show. All the and, old like, shows. All the old shows and, with like that. Yeah. Like, they had Thor in it and the Spider Man shows. They, all the animated Spider Man shows and like their partnership with Disney. Mm-hmm. All that stuff, I think, goes into it. And like even the, the, with those other franchises that had those other characters, like they, they, were, they had those outsourced, like you said, like um, they made like X Men movies and stuff like that that I think helped propel the whole vision and franchise of Marvel, like built it up. Yeah. Definitely. So I think Marvel's also definitely up there. And just like like we said, like they've put out so much over the past 15 years, however long MCU's been around, compared to like Star Wars has done like a trilogy of movies plus like two spinoffs and a few shows. But like Marvel has churned out like two movies a year on average for the past like 12 years because what there's like 24 yeah. 20 26 now movies and with many yep. more on the way so i think that's something to be reckoned with also just consider yeah. okay i'm gonna step back from that marvel anything else you want to talk about with marvel no, i think it covers a lot of the aspects of the two big ones at least for our book next on my list i had uh disney specifically the Ooh, interesting not because i know disney also includes star wars and marvel but i have disney animation studios so like yeah, the, you're talking the princess about, like, movies, princess, yeah, that that whole franchise because I think that's a very powerful franchise. It's funny to think about too all the stuff we've been talking about, like technological growth over time, but also like that happened with Disney and how they were animating as well. You know, they yeah, like, their whole process of trying to figure out okay, how do we Cell animate animation? Crazy multi layer camera that's set up vertically. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's literally like the size of like a whole room, like yeah, big room that's a multi story. What Daniel's describing is like Disney. I know people think of Disney as like as like a really old company, but back when it first started, it redefined how animation. That, that's pretty was much done. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, really redefined how 2D animation was done. Like they made Snow White was like the first feature length 2d animated like film and like a lot of animation they had to redraw like the background every time and disney and a lot of people back there but disney really primarily like influenced how they did animation with like different kind of planes almost uh, or like like mm-hmm. kind of clear sheets like layers uh of animation where the top layer would be the main character like moving around and then the background could just remain the same and like slightly shift is kind of what you're describing yep, exactly yeah. Yeah. It's just it's like cell techniques animation. that sound as simple as that, but back in the day was so new and complex. Abstract and foreign, yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy to think about how much exponential growth there has been. Yeah. And their like, franchise over that whole time. And their franchise also doesn't just stop there with their technological innovation, but like Disney World and Disneyland. Like oh, yeah. the biggest like building up a physical place for people to go to. Amusement parks in the world that yeah, I think mon- like money wise, and considering they've absorbed Marvel and and uh, <laughs> Star Wars, just even more money. <laughs> yeah, just I think in terms of big in scale, we're talking about the best big media franchises. If we if we were just talking about the biggest media franchises, Disney would win in a landslide, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh no, definitely Disney's like number one up there. It's hard to go to a household and say Disney and not know what it means. Right. I I think 
Disney gets a bad rap because because it's so big and everyone's like, oh, I like Disney. Like it's like not cool to like Disney because it's so cliche now. And also, just I think it's viewed as like kid like and childish. Yeah. I think I'm gonna risk sounding like a Disney like mega fan fanatic here, and I kind of am in some regards. But like I, I think I kind of fell off Disney around when I was like became a teenager. And I was like, oh, it's too cool to like kids movies. Like so, I kind of around like Tangled and Frozen era, I kind of stopped watching a little bit. But then. A couple years later, back when like Moana came out, I kind of started getting back into it slightly. And I, I really do enjoy, you know, watching a new Disney movie whenever it comes out, like every once in a while, you know? And I think that's a, a thing that Disney is going for is you watch these movies as a kid. And then once you have your own family, they it make it easy to bring your kids back to it. And then you also have that nostalgia added to it, which I think is huge. Yeah, I think a huge subset that we should also talk about, too, is Pixar. That's next on my list. <laughs> I was going to say. Sorry, yeah. I was drinking water. <laughs> it's just <laughs> dying over there. <laughs> you good, yeah. dude? Yeah, I went down the road. What park. happened? I wanted to talk about Pixar. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pixar. Ah. Well, Pixar almost killed me, so that's minus a point. <laughs> <laughs> Gro- growing off Ugh. a tangent of Disney, like... It's different like than stepping into Disney, yeah. 3D animation and all their new IPs. Well, new. I say new as in... Not like like traditional princess stories. You brought up a very important distinction. Disney and Pixar are often combined and considered the same, but they're different. I think Disney often takes existing legends and like stories and makes and like it makes it their own fantastical story. Things that are not copyright. It makes it their own. Yeah, Pixar yeah. does their own story. Like they, it's all original ideas, um, which mm-hmm. I think uh, it makes me lean towards Pixar more in that sense because I really like that. Um, but it's just an interesting distinction. So because of the stories are all unique and different, it allows not only for you to tell stories that can be more, you know, people could relate to more, connect to more, but also something that because it's so different, people are going to be more intrigued and want to know more just off the get anyway, right? It's not going to be like, oh, another princess movie. Yeah. She's, uh, she, she's taken by some bad guy like uh, Princess Peach. Oh, no. It's no, like we got a toy that could talk and they're making an army to fight yeah. this kid named Sid. What the heck? <laughs> Yeah. I don't remember that legend from the olden days. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> just reading a scroll. Maybe that's Pixar's secret. They just have like this secret. They found these ancient ruins and just found all these like crazy stories <laughs> that they're just slowly going through one at a time. <laughs> they also have a very big franchise. I know they're kind of a sub part in Disney now and they work together. But I like Cars itself is just a huge franchise. I think that was also on the list of as its own individual franchise just the really? merchandising yeah cars well, because yeah, that's of the merchandising true. The merchandise and all the like, the stuff you like yeah there's cars that was land, sold. which is like a sub section of um Dis- of Disneyland but like seriously the reason they made I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that like th- I know cars 2 and 3 were not the best Pixar movies but they I think far outperform every other movie in terms of merchandise and like toys because people just kids want toy cars and that's so easy to do and like cars with little eyes cute eyes on them like that's genius i also think it's interesting with pixar we talk about they're all original stories the franchises are different in their own sense like pixar every time it makes a new movie unless it's a sequel it like creates this whole new world unless i mean like obviously pixar theory it's one world i was gonna say yeah the pixar but, theory. <laughs> but you think about it like it's they're building new worlds every time like in brave it's like scotland every time they make a new movie they're building like a whole new world marvel on the other hand is kind of more world expanding. They're not world building every time. There's occasionally they do well, like when they go into right like Guardians. But I just think it's interesting that just the approach they would have to go to it because I think Marvel has to world expand and like have fit characters into the one Marvel Cinematic Universe until the multiverse breaks open. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. for now, yeah. But Pixar, I think, has a challenge that every movie they have to world build. And I think it's interesting. They, I think they've gotten really good at that. And I don't think they're good at world expanding because a lot of their sequels are often not the best like, accepted well or like yeah. critically do well. Like The Cars, for example. Incredibles 2 didn't really, not a lot of people liked it compared to the first Like connected one. with. Yeah. So I just think that's interesting. My next thing after Pixar was um, Harry Potter. Let me guess. Oh, I was going to say Harry Potter. Sorry. I literally just went to Universal <laughs> today, and we went to Harry Potter World. Man, is that a good Ooh. franchise. Just the Did music. you get a wand? 
No, but I got a butter beer. Nice. And I put uh, a shot of Tito's in it as well. Oh my <laughs> so it was god! Alcoholic. <laughs> they said nice. it was funny. The, the ride attendant was super chill. He um uh so my my roommate like performs in one of the shows. So we went to go see him, and after the show, like you can wait in line to get pictures with them, and we were gonna wait in line, obviously, to get a picture. So while we were waiting in line to see him, the guy there, we were talking about butter beer because I had went up, and they were like, you have to get an alcoholic one at the bar, not at this just outside stand. I was like, oh okay, so we'll go to the bar, and then we were talking about. The guy ever heard me? He was like, "There's no actually, not an actually an alcoholic one." We were like, "What? Are you kidding me?" Because I thought there was. Then he was like, "But mm-hmm. like, you didn't hear this from me. You can maybe like buy a shot because they do serve alcohol, and then like butter beer, and then oh no, I slipped or something. <laughs> That's what he literally <laughs> told us to do. I mean, sorry." didn't tell us to do. If anyone's <laughs> listening, <laughs> but yeah, so that's what we did. It was just one drink. It was nice. Fun. Anyways, but yeah, but that's why Harry Potter is the top of my list because of butter beer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, just no, like, okay, so Harry Potter is unique because of its like origins and how how because it was a book it's first. Kind, it's kind of, it's yes, yeah, it, it was a book first. Well, Marvel World series first. did it amazing. That's well, kind yeah, of similar. No, it's similar, but in this sense, I feel like Harry Potter, especially now with the new films too, is kind of doing what Pixar did in, in a way. You know what, what I mean? mean? How we were talking about like before, like not only is it able to like come up with good like sequels and stuff but it's also able to world build it's able to do both because now we're getting like the new films with, like yeah I mean, with fantastic beasts they're getting into new films yeah i think harry potter is great at at world building but but well it's interesting because it's kind of world expanding because it's all I, I guess that's what you're saying sorry yeah so yeah. harry potter is good at world expanding because it's all in the same world and, like they establish this amazing world this magical world and they're not making like a new world every time okay i get it now yeah yeah but, like, yeah, I love all the locations, like Hogwarts and, like, Diagon Alley. This mm-hmm. Ministry of Magic. Like, it, it is a very fletched-out world with so many details. Yeah, it, it's really well-defined. That I think is done very well. Yeah. Yeah. And they have, like, their own parks. I think they should they should have made their own Harry Potter park. Like, not just part of Universal, honestly. Yeah. No, no honestly, I feel like they should have done the same. I feel like that... Like, just that in itself would be expandable in so many ways. And yeah. you have... Because it would be dedicated, you could have much more of, like, a, you know, like, in-depth focus... To like all the different like regions and stuff you could go to yeah okay what did you think uh fantastic beast you haven't seen that have you i haven't seen it okay i saw the first one i think it's okay i haven't seen any of the new movies yeah the cgi from what i've seen looks great yeah that's, that's really, also yeah all the creatures and um just, also harry potter itself is just like a coming of age story so i think that's really cool it's interesting because a lot of yeah. some of these franchises are like centered around one character and some of them are not like marvel centered around multiple characters across all the movies uh, Pixar is multiple characters. Star Wars is kind of started out as one character, like mm-hmm. Luke slash Anakin Skywalker, and then expanded into now just exploring the world because it's a really interesting world. Harry Potter, I think, is kind of following a similar suit where it started out following Harry Potter, and now it's such an interesting world we're expanding that. It's weird to think about how how like characters like anchor down franchises in a way. Yeah, it's you know yeah. I, mean? I wonder if it's it's probably a huge risk and like kind of worrying and, and like a test to see will this franchise like what if you don't have a good character? It's weird to attach Fantastic Beasts to Harry Potter because it's not like it's Harry Potter's world. Like it's it's this magical wizarding world. Harry Potter and the magical beast before he was born. Right, that's like <laughs> always weird. But I think Star Wars has that okay because they didn't call it like Skywalker Saga. They called it Star Wars. So like more generic in a way. Yeah. Speaking of names, the next name of the next franchise I want to talk about is Lord of the Rings. Because I think that's also a huge one um, with the books. My precious. Yeah. I'm actually watching it for the first time with my roommate and I, I really like it so far. It's it, just the world's the freaking scenery. It's weird to think about because this is, I feel like, more of a tangent along. I would say Harry Potter, but I actually want to say Dune due to the timing difference between like when the books were originally written uh-huh. versus when they're like actually getting their justice on like on the screen. Right. Because uh, these the original books were written like what, like World War Two? So it was. A, it's, I think it was a while. I don't know exactly when, but. Yeah, so the Lord of the Rings were at first a series of books, and then they also had the Hobbit, and and then Hobbit was made mm-hmm. into a, a, its own series of, like of movies. So that's another thing like expanding. There's a new Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings show coming out. Mm-hmm. I think this Lord of the Rings though is kind of, in my opinion, died off a little bit, like compared to the hype of like Star Wars that we hear all day every day. It's more of a niche thing. But then again, I don't know. It could have a resurgence because like Star Wars. Yeah. If I'm thinking back to like 2010, before like the Disney acquisition, the announcement of the new trilogy of movies. I think Star Wars was kind of dying because the six movies were done. Yeah, true. They had the Clone Wars show, which was going, and I was going, chugging along, which was fine. But after that, I thought it was going to be done. So, like, 
you never know what's going to happen. Like, it could turn around and make a whole plethora of content. It's also funny to think about, like, how categorical you can get with all these different franchises. Because there's, when I say categorical, I mean, like, being able to break them down by different, well, categories, right? So, like, some are, like, more serious. Some, like we said before, like, designed for kids. Some are more, like, vibrant. Some are more grounded and realistic. It's interesting, Um, though. I think most of them can apply, uh, check a lot of boxes in these categories you're describing because they are so big. I think they apply to a a lot of people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, it's funny to think about that because in some cases, you're only, like, maybe, like, unchecking one or two. And then it's, like, switching over to, like, another one else or to another universe, you know what I mean, or another franchise. Um, right. So it's just funny to think about how many close tangents there. For example, like comparing Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings on, on like big scale ideals like that. Like, Even Lord of the like, Rings and like Game magic. of Thrones. Like yeah, e- like that. Like like medievalish feel. Is it's yeah. more gr- like just the way that they were filmed. You know, it's uh-huh. not like super saturated colors or anything like that. You get much more like earthy tones. It, it is just interesting to think about like how, how those are able to be broken down, but also are still very similar. Like like all these yeah. franchises have like ticks are similar. Okay, um, so next, yeah, I want to talk about when we mentioned Game of Thrones. I don't think that's as big as like Lord of the Rings. I don't know. I, I maybe it is. I need to like see the longevity of it. It's been so, it's kind of more recent. I need to also watch it. I haven't personally watched it, so I I don't feel comfortable like speaking on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that those were like the kind of the big ones I came up with on my own. Um, and then I s- looked up some of the other big ones, and actually the biggest mm-hmm. franchise financially I think was Pokemon. Actually. Oh, yeah. Um, just because yeah, of, yeah, it yeah, yeah. appeals to both Eastern and Western audiences. And with like with the video games, the reach is huge. Except I don't think it's really broken into the huge blockbuster movie spectacle too much. They're, like I know there's Detective Pikachu. Yeah. I know. I remember when I was a kid, there were like the Pokemon movies, but I remember they weren't like huge or anything. But I, I like the toys are huge. They, they're breaking it into like the gaming. I mean, the video games, but also they're breaking into like augmented reality with like Pokemon Go and just like being able to walk yeah. around and do stuff. So those are huge aspects. I, I personally don't have too much experience. I played a lot of the video games and like the card game, obviously. I mean, um, that's going to say with the cars themselves. I mean, that's a like, huge market and it allows like a lot of the cars. It, it's funny to think. No, the cards. It sounded well, like you said dude, cars. Dude, imagine Pokemon <laughs> cars. Pokemon. Oh cars. my. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, like like the cars, because it not only enables collectability, which which what we've seen. Hard to CRV. I choose you. <laughs> <laughs> it adds rare bi- rareability and you know adds a value to the cards, which again is why they're being sold for like crazy amounts again right yeah. now. Yeah, because there's so many different like card franchises, right? If you think about it, if you're thinking about like a a card game where you're able to collect cards, you either think of like things where it's like baseball cards or like some kind of, some kind of sports thing, or it's Pokemon for like trading yeah. cards. That's true. Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess. Yu-Gi-Oh itself was a franchise, but it didn't hit as hard as Pokemon because, like, the game play and, like, the games themselves I think also, uh, it's, again, which, expand. what we were talking about, like, checking off all those boxes. Pokemon's a very, like, oh, it's, like, cute little animals. Kids can enjoy it, but also there's, like, intense fighting. So, like, maybe teenagers and, like, more adults can enjoy that and just, like, that aspect to everything. Yeah. So, yeah, so it checks a lot of boxes. I think that's interesting. It's interesting, like, kind of comparing all these franchises and seeing what's common between... All of them, like they check, they, they can appeal to wide audiences, which I think is why people are, are fans of multiple ones of these. Like if you're a fan of Star Wars, you're probably a fan of Marvel, most likely. Yeah. And if you're a fan of like Disney, you're most likely a fan of Pixar too. Yeah. So I have two left on my list. Sorry. Was there any, I feel like I've been talking about all my lists. No, you no, you get through your list and, I'll, and I'll, I'll bring up some. Okay. Well, because you have, you have more concise. The second highest franchise in revenue was actually Hello Kitty. <laughs> so... That's all I wanted to say about that, honestly. I have no further insights. Um, but after mm-hmm. that, I had... Betty um, Boop? Is that <laughs> what you, who you have next? No, I have... Uh, next, I had Mario. Um, that's, that's the last one on my list. Like I feel Mario and Nintendo that, as that a gets whole. In, that gets into where, where I was going to go to. I was going to start transitioning more over into the games. But Mario is a good place to start with it's that. It's huge with um, just like the Eastern... It appeals to, again, Western and Eastern audiences. It's really cool to think that, like, how, like, these are just original concepts. Like, you can make anything a huge concept, a huge franchise. Like, freaking Mario is, like, an Italian plumber that jumps on turtles, and yet it is, like, a billion-dollar industry. Well, even before that, he he was a guy who would just try to run up a yeah. bunch of ramps, avoiding burrows to save a princess burls. from a, yeah. burls <laughs> from a monkey, you know? Yeah. 
So like that getting into like getting his own thing and then and then just expanding to a whole game series and franchise and then just and then again that also goes into the world building of like okay who are these other characters what kind of impact do they have it's weird because it is world building in the case was also making new worlds each time sometimes for example like uh, Super Mario Galaxy you know like totally different same characters but yeah. like in a totally different scenario I feel like that's what makes Mario. Um, Mario. a very unique character in this case because he's able to do stuff like that we don't see in like films because like if you, if you took like Iron Man and you put him into a completely different universe like Hello Kitty that wouldn't work out <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> I want that the most ambitious crossover of all time <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Hello Kitty would destroy Iron Man oh <laughs> uh. It'd be funny if, it, if she, like, in her universe, she's, like, uber powerful, but you can't tell. Because, like, everything else is also uber Hello powerful. Hello Kitty versus, like, uh, <laughs> like Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> Full power. All right. Well, okay. This is what I'm thinking, Daniel. Do you think it would be cool if we, like, save a video game one for the next time? Because I'm looking at it. We've been talking for, like, 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. We could totally we do that could. another time. Okay. Okay. So, out of the franchises that I just mentioned, then... Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Pokemon, <laughs> Hello Kitty, and Mario. If you had to choose only one franchise for the rest of time, it's basically if you were falling through the sky and your parachute locked up and the only way to open the backup chute was to choose one franchise to live with for the rest of your life. Hello Kitty. Okay, which <laughs> franchise no, no, would you no, choose? No, no. Like Star Wars, Marvel, <laughs> Disney, Pixar, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones. That's, would it be? that's honestly a toss up between Star Wars and Marvel. Um, you had to choose one. I know. I'm going to say Star Wars. I know. That's what you said. I think I would also have to choose. You could say Marvel and be like, hey, Marvel has a multiverse, so Star Wars is within. Oh, yeah. No, technically, you know, that, that, actually, that is that's an actual cheating. thing. That's cheating. That's cheating. You can't do that. That is an do actual that. thing, though. I'm no, going to say cheating. it. Nope. So I, I think I would also choose Star Wars. Okay. Well, okay. Well, what if we, if we say Disney. Do we get no, Pixar? No, no, Disney's just the, the <laughs> princesses. You say Star Dang. Wars, I'll say Marvel, and we'll just go over to each other's houses all the time and like catch up on. Oh, each I thought you were gonna, I, I think we're gonna say, and as we're floating down, we'll just swing by and watch each other's like, phone. As <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, the parachute. Now I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I think honestly, though, legit, I'd probably choose Star Marvel. Wars. It's so tough right now. Really? I don't know. It's uh, I do. I already pulled my shoot. You're still, you're still falling. I'm still falling. You're right. Maybe I just hit the ground so I don't have to deal with uh, <laughs> choosing. I can't live I can't in a live world either where there's not one or the I other. Can't without either of them. <laughs> Actually, no. I'd probably say Marvel just because of the nostalgia. I'm going to say Marvel. That's my final answer for now. Okay. <laughs> for now. For now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So another, we'll talk about video games in another one. And also, I want to do another episode where we talk about franchises that are smaller but have a lot of impact still, kind of like sleeper ones. Maybe some that kind of have like a cult like following. Like uh, we talk about the Dark like Crystal. Dark Crystal. Um, yeah. And then like also like Avatar, The Last Airbender, um, even like Transformers and TMNT, I think well, are. Those are those are bigger ones. Those are big, but I don't think they're as big say. as like Disney or Star Wars. So, so I oh, think. Oh, no, definitely not. But so yeah. that's why I want to put them in their own separate. So that, that's, that's for another episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Are you ready for jump into one of our new segments? Is it one that I know or is it one that, that's new, new? No, this is new, new. <laughs> this is, um, I'm calling this, <laughs> I'm calling this bad pitches because it's a joke instead Oof. of bad something else. Another word that rhymes with pitches. Bad hitches. Yeah, exactly. So this is the <laughs> one where, so Daniel and I are going to give each other a prompt. It was, this was, this was Daniel's idea. He recommended it from another podcast. We came up with some concept and then we're going to give it to each other for the first time we don't know what the other person's going to say and then they have to build like a show or a movie or some something around that concept and we're intentionally trying to give bad star wars ideas do you want me to go first or you to go first you go first like me pitch to you or give yeah, to you, you well you give me your idea okay so I'll... if you had to make a show or a movie a star wars movie or star wars show about a droid working on an assembly line to make other droids what would you do I'm thinking like episode two when he's on the assembly line, you know, okay, Geonosis. Okay, stop. Here, here's the scene. Okay, okay, here's the pitch. Visualize this, okay? Wow, no time to think. <laughs> we're, we're in the factory on Genosis, okay? Okay. We have the engineering droids that are on the assembly line right next to the big compressors and the big like stomping pieces to get the molds for the arms. Okay. And our, our bot here... He, he's realizing that he's he's lagging behind. The assembly lines are just told to do it double time. So as things are speeding up, he's losing himself in the motions. 
and he starts to get caught up into the machine and then he gets pulled in and from here he loses his arm <gasps> classic star wars fashion classic star wars, okay of course all right that's how i know it's star wars now okay <laughs> at this moment he's now realizing as he's going down the line like what am i doing with my life what is my programming having me do and as he gets like spat out like there's the main robot parts are being put together but he doesn't match up so he gets like just ejected yeah he's not in the factory anymore so now he has to think about okay like what what am i going to do i'm not in the factory what do i how do i survive what am i what's my function what's my purpose that's the droid we follow okay <laughs> what 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 happens in the show like what <laughs> that's, so, so the, that's, that's like the, the that's, launching that's like point the, that's like that's like the pilot that's like the whole pilot yeah okay, so, what, so, so what does the show follow like what's just give me so, a brief overview of his adventures that he would go on then so so uh, the next thing that happens right is the jedi invasion when the oh, so this is in episode sit- two okay yes daniel daniel you're pitching to me i'm a star wars executive just give me the, the the outline. What's happening in the show? Okay, okay. So the robot escapes from this fight and is taken to another planet by a junker. Okay, because okay. some time goes by, a junker comes by and picks him up. The junker tries to have him join his crew and tries to reprogram him. But in the process, he he actually reactivates him and he's like, I got to find my way back to the factory. So that's this robot's purpose. He's so trying to get whole, back to the, the factory. The whole point is he's trying to get back to the factory. Yes. Okay. But halfway through... We realize, like through the series, he gets back to the factory. It's shut down. Ooh. Again, the clones took it over, and the, this is like towards the end of the Republic era now, right? Because there's a little bit of a time jump. I think it'd be cool if, like, halfway through. Sorry, I mean, I just think it'd be cool if, like, he realizes that, like, he doesn't want to go back to the factory at some point. No, that that's that's what he'd get to at the end. Like, he'd be like, okay, so I can't do this now. So, like, why did I even want to come back here in the first place? And then from there, he then like go back with the junker, and then they go okay. on their own adventure. Interesting. Yeah. What if in my story, the droid turns into IG eighty eight? Boom. That totally break lore and everything else, but I'm just saying that'd be a fun concept. Okay. What is your, right, your ready? concept for me? Yeah. C three PO, but he has no arms, no legs, and his voice modulator is busted like Bumblebee. Okay. Give me a second. Could be anytime, anywhere. Doesn't matter. But. That's the prompt. So this is going to take place hundreds of years after anything we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> no, Everyone's for real. Dead. Okay. okay. Yeah. So because C-3PO has been run down, he's like just decayed. Like he doesn't have any arms or legs and he, his voice modulator is broken. So C-3PO is hundreds of years in the future after the Republic and First Order has fallen. Like Leia, Luke, all of them are gone. After the events mm-hmm. of episode nine... Finally, someone has realized that, like, the Jedi and the Sith, they can't exist, coexist. coexist. So yeah. there's a new order of of Force users that are just gray Jedi, and they live harmoniously s- somewhat. The, the days of old are, like, memories of the past. And then this little kid, this kid, like, about Anakin's age, finds C-3PO, and mm-hmm. it's just a simple little story about... This kid finding C-3PO and then going on adventures, uh, scrapping to try to rebuild C-3PO. And it takes him across the galaxy and we get to explore like remnants of the old days and nostalgia of like he picks up parts from... He has to go to all these old ships to find parts that work with C-3PO. And he goes on this epic quest. He goes to the, the new gray Jedi to ask them for guidance and they have to meditate and like think back. But it just is a simple story of a, of a boy trying to rebuild C-3PO. C-3PO after at the very end when he comes to comes back and his, his voice modulator is fixed and he's back to normal he thanks him and tells him that he reminds him of his creator young anakin skywalker i like that i actually really like that that's touching what's the boy's motive though for rebuilding c-3po like there has to be like some juice there that's getting him going um does he just like find him and he's just like oh just robot i think he just wants a friend i think he's a uh, he's oh, damn. like he doesn't have a family that's sad and that he just latches on to him oh that's sad build a friend <laughs> those are so. Those are our bad pitches. You made that sound really good. Holy shit! Mine was terrible. Compared no, those, to that. that's the name of the segment. Bad pitches. Remember? I know. I'm just saying, like, because we flip them. Like, I tried to make one that was hard for you. I'm like, oh yeah, let me give you like a character that's like mid tier, <laughs> that's mid, and and then like just disable him completely, <laughs> and you turn it into this whole thing where it's like this emotional. That's the point of the, the exercise is to make like a, I want to practice <laughs> making good stories. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, you ready to jump into our next segment? Yeah. 
Uh, I think we're going to call this one Righteous Rank Rally, if you're cool with that, because the alliteration. Yeah. This is where Arr. we're going to... Yeah. Um, it's so stressful coming up with like a new segment name. You got to make sure you get it right, you know? It's funny you say that. I played Destiny 2, and I just made a new group name called the Good Guardian Guys. So it's the <laughs> GGG. GGG. <laughs> <laughs> anywho sorry continue no it's all good so basically what we're gonna do <laughs> we're going to rank our top five we're gonna rank our top five marvel movie directors in reverse order yes yeah, so that's reverse what order. we're gonna do and we're gonna have you briefly. go first all right so my number five i've got john watts there he did all the spider-man whole trilogy he's i think he's really fascinating just because he didn't have any blockbuster experience like big blockbuster movie making experience before this and then he made this amazing trilogy and also he's the only director that did the entire trilogy of one character in Marvel. Yep. Um, so I think that's fascinating. Number four, I've got my boy John Favreau. Whew. I love John Favreau. I mean, he freaking launched the MCU. I'm also just a John Favreau super fan. He did so he did like Iron Man one and two, and then also of course he's done like the Mandalorian, Elf, Lion King. I know that's bonus stuff from Marvel, but like just like setting the tone for the MCU, that's got to put you on the top five at least. He's also Happy Hogan in the MCU, so like. Come on, you know? What do you, do you think John Favreau's cool people. at all? <laughs> okay. No, terrible guy. Terrible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not like the great, just a great creative mind. It's also just cool to see like how he's like literally put himself into the, you know, yeah. like universe now, which is awesome. It's always cool when you're able to do stuff like that. Yeah. Next we've got on my list is Taika Waititi. Mm-hmm. He did Thor Ragnarok and he's doing Thor Love and Thunder. The only reason he's not higher is because he's only done one so far. So I'm... And yeah, I, I, I trust that, him. That's a fair. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I think that he might go higher after Thor 11 Thunder, depending on how that goes. But I just love Thor Ragnarok so much, just that unique style. And he really brought me back around to Thor as a character because I really was worried after Thor The Dark World. Mm-hmm. And then number two, I've got James Gunn, man. Like, Guardians should not have been oh, I didn't as have... epic as it, as, it wa- as it was. I didn't have Guardians on my list. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah, so we've got Guardians 1 and 2 that he did. Again, he helmed two projects. And it's just, he just redefined space for the MCU, like, for the better. Because we saw space in Avengers, and it was kind of looked kind of crappy in my opinion no offense and like loki was like talking to that guy in space but then just like the colors yeah. and the tone with like the music that james gunn brought oh that just elevates him to number two on my list and i know here number one is or the probably, russo brothers they both are the yeah. russo brothers are my number <laughs> one yes i just love them in their work like the winter soldier is actually my favorite mcu film and just the accomplishments they we're able to pull off with Infinity War and Endgame. And Endgame is literally the highest grossing film of all time. And just balancing all those characters into somehow a coherent story, I think is incredible. That That's my top five. And, and yeah, I just love Marvel, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a that's solid a good list. Pick. That, that, that is a solid list. That's actually pretty close to mine. I also Thank had you. John Watts at five. Again, because of the Spider-Man trilogy. And you know, my nostalgia with Spidey and finally seeing him in the MCU is really important. Number four. No, you had Favreau at four, right? Yes. Yeah, no, that's who I had as four as well. Favreau, because again, just, just the character that he brings into, well, his characters. I love how, how he's able to really show like a lot of connections and the interpersonalities of how these characters can relate he to each other. He has an actor background, so I think that really helps him. Yeah, that, that develops a lot or shows a lot in his, his development of these characters. And again, and same with TD for number three, because... Just, just everything from color design down to like, just again, character interactions, bring this whole new tone to a character that, again, like you said, after Dark World, that he's almost a nobody write-off. had faith. Yeah, nobody had faith, but he was able to bring it right back, and and everyone, like everybody, is super excited for Love and Thunder now. It's just crazy how a director that turnaround with yeah. a with a proper vision, yeah, can just bring that around. Yeah, hundred percent. For number two, I swapped out Gun because I'm technically, technically. You can now say Sam Raimi. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's true. So I was saying Sam Raimi for like the OG Spider-Man's. Wow. Come I, on, come that's on. such a but cop then, out, but, then, but okay. <laughs> but also, but also because he's going to be doing Mom, Multiverse well, of Madness. you don't know how he's going to so do it. We haven't, we haven't seen Madness. it yet. That's the thing. We haven't seen it yet. That's true. But if it that's is a good as point. good as I believe it's going to be. He's your number two. I, that's a huge jump. Wow. Yes. Well, again, I have a huge nostalgia connection with that's with true the spideys so i was like i was kind of trying to find a spot for him to fit in there yeah and then yeah the Ro- the russos again for number, me are for number one okay yeah. what they did with the whole just the overarching thing with infinity war and if it is and civil war you like come on like ah yeah masterpieces masterpieces yeah. nothing else much to say there they, they they have earned that spot yeah 
All right, that, that's that's our um, new segment, Righteous Rank Rally. We're going to take, like, different things. Like, we might, like, rank the Jedi or like, our top five Jedi or top five, I don't know, anything. So if you have any suggestions for what we should rank, let us know. Also, shout out to uh, Blake's takes. I'm going to tag him on TikTok when we post this. But I saw this idea from them. They, like, ranked their f- top five Star Wars, like, musical themes, um, which I thought was really interesting. It's funny how close our lists were. I mean, I mean it makes sense. Yeah, we like, didn't talk about a lot this of the same before. taste. Yeah. yeah. Like, same literally order and everything. On point. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, but like, we have like a lot of the same reasoning too, yeah. which is kind of, I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ready to jump into the next segment? Yes. Now, this is a longer episode. Uh, apologies, people. I hope you're enjoying it. But yeah. So next we're going to jump into totally tubular trivia tidbits. Are you ready for a totally tubular trivia tidbit? Yep. Give me your worst. All right. So did you know that the director of Kung Fu Panda hated the original script of the movie? Really? Yeah, so the DreamWorks Why? animation executive that came up with the idea for Kung Fu Panda pitched it to be a spoof that made fun of typical karate films. Like, he didn't want it to have epic fight scenes or, like, any amazing action, which, like, we eventually got. But the, so the director of the movie, that the person that was going to helm this, hated this idea because he wanted it to be a film that celebrated martial arts and, like, celebrated Kung Fu movies of the past. So the creative team spent like years literal years researching like chinese culture like paintings and sculpture and architecture and other like kung fu films to get to find the right style for the film and he actually sent all of the animators on the project to a six hour kung fu class so that they could get familiar with how martial artists like move their bodies then they ended up deciding he came back and they decided to go with a film that was still centered around comedy but really respected and honored the old kung fu movies and i mean i think we can agree did a great job <laughs> did an amazing job yeah man that was my that was my first one i have another one but do you have a, a, a ttt i'm gonna be honest nope okay <laughs> nope all right this is this one's my heavy hitter uh, are you ready for this one i always forget i'm sorry this, one, this segment i'm always just blanking on but you have two so you kind of worked out yeah. you have another one that's gonna suffice for mine you ready yeah it better be good you can't take credit from I. <laughs> this is good, though. This one, I swear to you, is good. Are you ready? Yeah. Did you know Disney was planning a Monsters, Inc. sequel where Boo died? Why? So before Monsters Why? University was an idea, uh, there were plans to make a movie where Sully went back to visit Boo on her birthday. The premise was they were going to go back through her door and find an old lady in Boo's bed. So they would assume that she'd moved, and then Mike and Sully would like venture out into the human world and go on an adventure to find her new house. And then they'd eventually realize that the old, that lady, the old lady was, was her. Boo on her deathbed. Yeah, it works because time travel are in the human world than in the monster world. Boo would wake up, look at Sully, smile and whisper, Kitty, and then die. And then pass away. Yes. Jesus. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, thank so, God that they turned to yeah, a movie. They decided, they decided it was too dark and to go with the prequel instead because they really like how Monsters Inc. ended, and and they felt like Boo and Sully's story ended well, and they didn't want to open that door again. <laughs> Get it? Literally open that door again. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who thought of that though? Honestly, I don't know. Kitty. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, but that that was my T T T T. All right. This has been a experimental episode. Yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Honestly, if you let us know seriously what you think of any of those new sections, I think it'd be good if we spaced them out. So like, had like a random or like a cycle of these ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we talk longer in our main segment this time than we usually do. Yeah, we that's talk true. for like twenty or thirty minutes about a, whatever. This is a long boy. Yeah, yeah, long boy. So let's finish up that. so I can edit it for when it goes out <laughs> in two days. <laughs> All right, are you ready for Patreon shoutouts? Yeah, hit me with them. Keep the Victoria's music. Boom, she got Patreon. Lori, Frank, Rick, Lisa, Evan, Tony. Thank you so much for watching the tier. Thank you for the shout out. If you'd like to support us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. You get the audio episode early. Um, we'll roll in our Discord. A lot of cool benefits, special perks. Yeah, so get the stuff. thank you to our Patreon supporters. Yeah, ready for review shout outs? Yep. This is a section where we will shout out a review on Apple Podcasts or a comment on our YouTube. So if you want to get shout out here, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or a comment on our YouTube. I actually do have an amazing comment from someone on our YouTube, Alan. Uh, it's either Stefan or Steven. Stephen? Stefan? Alan? Alan? I'm so sorry. Alan, I appreciate your comment. He said, <laughs> why is there nobody talking about this channel? It's awesome. It talks about things that are great. Keep it up, guys. Two emoji thumbs Aww. up and a party emoji. So thank you, Alan. Seriously, that I saw that and made my week. <sighs> Franchises. Big stuff. <laughs> you said that like we're starting the video again. <laughs> I was just like... <laughs> we're making our own like, uh, franchise. Whatever we want, franchise. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's everything I had. You ready for the... Anything else you want to add before we jump into the introduction? No, I think that's pretty much it, man. Tell me when. When. 
we just talked about what we want to talk about and now we're done thank you so so much for listening seriously really appreciate it thanks for dealing with these like new things new segments again let us know what you think feeling out the water yeah we'll be back again i'm going to be editing those interview episodes the two interviews that we still have and dropping those at some point like maybe like on a random thursday every whenever i can get around to it so keep an eye out for those they're super cool interviews um next week we there's nothing releasing so we'll probably do another like kind of experimental episode where we talk about maybe something that we talked about we were gonna talk about this week like maybe the smaller franchises or like continue with the video game franchises this may be like a part two we'll see um if you have any suggestions let us know and otherwise thank you goodbye bye